Hello everyone, my name is Willy Wonka and welcome back to World of Tanks. Today I'm driving the ever so challenging Challenge the Challenger, the tier 7 British tank destroyer which is fairly new compared to the old line, you know which is the AT7, the AT line going up to the 1A3, this is the new line going up from the Archer up to the FE4005 stage 2. Now this tank line was introduced in patch 9.5. Looking back at it, it's already a year old. I am still on the Challenger. It's taken me a year to get from the Firefly to the Challenger. Actually from the Sherman 3 to the Challenger. Yeah, this, this, this tank line has two ways to get onto the, uh, the Challenger. You can take the Tank Destroyer line, which is the Archer and then some tanks before that. Or you can take the Sherman 3 line with some tanks before that, I don't know. Going up to the Firefly, one of the most iconic British tanks in the game, I think, at the moment. Uh, and then go on to the Challenger. Uh, and I didn't like my Firefly, to be honest. I only played it in Strongholds. It was fairly good in Strongholds, but not that great. And now I'm not really enjoying my Challenger. Now, why am I not really enjoying the Challenger? Well, its gun is good. It, it, it's a very good gun, but the alpha damage is, in my opinion, a bit low for tier 7 tank destroyer-wise. Seeing as I am used to the SU-12244, the IS or not the ISU, the SU-152, the Yak Panther, those tanks. And then I get a 150 damage gun on tier 7. Other than that, the armor is not that great. But don't expect it to be great because you're a tank destroyer. But you cannot really give a good punch to the enemy like you can with the 300 Alpha on the Yak Panther, for example. When you hit a tank with the Challenger, you have to hit it at least three more times to make it have an impact. And before that, they have already pulled back if they're not stupid. So you hit them for like 140 damage, and they pull back, and you've done 140 damage, and they're like, oh, that's annoying. Instead of, why is there a tank camping in the back? Boo! And that is where this tank sort of is different to other tank destroyers. You almost have to play it like a medium, but not like an aggressive medium. You have the gun, you have the rate of fire to annoy people if they're in a bad position. But if you are camping in the back, they will usually find cover very fast, which means you cannot use the rate of fire. So you have to be in an aggressive position for a TD, but a safe position for a medium. And that is why this tank is relatively difficult to play, but if you know how to play it, it can be quite good. A small fun fact about the Challenger, at the back of its turret is 200mm thick, and that is the thickest part of the whole tank. Now why is the back 200mm thick and not the front? Well, the back of the turret is actually a counterweight for the gun, because the gun was quite heavy and couldn't fit the turret. So they had to put in a counterweight. So if you have the back of the Challenger, always shoot it in the hole, because you are likely actually to bounce from the back. That's a small fun fact I'd like to you know, share with you guys today, I'm bored and I need to talk about something. Speaking of talking about something, the tier 6 part of the campaign has finally ended. Uh, on day of recording, Tuesday, I am in a rest day. The map is switching from tier 6 to tier 8, and we're going to have 8 days of tier 8 in front of us. Now, the tier 6 stage for QSFE was a bit of a roller coaster ride. By the second day, there was a brief moment where we had 4 provinces. Now, in our opinion, that's pretty damn good. But we lost all of those provinces the very next day to one clan. From that point on, it was a struggle to gain another province. But we ended the tier 6 stage with two provinces, which is not bad. But it was it was a roller coaster ride. It, that's the only way to describe it. It was up and down from the get-go. And, you know, during the campaign, or just before the campaign... I promised you guys to uh, make a Clan Wars special. Uh, you know, showing tier 6, tier 8 and tier 10 games with live commentary, or well, commentary, live commanding, live screaming, that kind of stuff. Well, you had a small sneak peek in last week's video. But, as I said, that footage corrupted. What I can do, though, is I can record the game and then put in the voices of us that I recorded from TeamSpeak over the game. And I think that's what I'm going to do, because I recorded a second game. Sadly enough, that footage didn't corrupt, but was really laggy for some reason. So I'm going to have to do the same with that. Now I hope for the tier 8 stage I can actually get clear footage for it. 
but so far I've not really been lucky with 9.12 and recording. Which is kind of weird. But I will try to uh, give you the best quality gameplay that I can give you with live voices uh, from TeamSpeak. While this challenging challenger game continues, I want to take the time to actually thank you guys for watching these videos and uh, leaving these nice comments. I, I didn't expect to actually like gain a following, I guess you can say. Like 330 oh, subscribers at the moment. That's pretty good. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for liking these videos and like leaving nice comments for me and M4. I didn't really expect that to happen. I just, like I said last two videos ago, I didn't really think I would enjoy making videos, but I really do. And I do like to continue this until either World of Tanks dies, I don't find it enjoyable anymore, or the world comes to an end. The third one more likely than the second one. But yeah, thank you everyone for being such nice guys to us, and I can't wait for the trolls to come in and ruin it for everyone.